David Bonson joins us. He's the CIO of the Bonson Group for that at Morgan Stanley, UBS, all those kinds. Of things. He's been doing this stuff for a long time. David, what do we do here with this market? I've got a Fed that I think is going to begin cutting rates uh, this week. I've got a pretty decent earnings outlook, I think. What do I do with my equity portfolio these days? The problem you have is not what the Fed's going to do, because that's well known, and it's not about earnings, which are quite good, but known to be good. The problem is what you got to pay to okay. get that. Okay. It's all valuation oriented. Uh, earnings growth has been at the higher end of expectations for a couple of years. And again, I would argue if you get the very, very, very best case on the planet, earnings growth for next year, on top of what was great earnings growth in 23 and 24, then you're still paying well over 20 times mm. for the S&P. And that's broken out with a basically about 16 times multiple for everything that isn't technology okay. and 40 times for technology. So how about 16 times for the non-tech? Uh, am, am I okay with that? And if so, where do I go? You're going to do better that way, in my okay. opinion. And you have for the last couple months. You know, one week, one day, those things I don't call a rotation. But you, this started around July 10th or so. We're now getting into the second half of September. You've had a massive rally in the defensives. Okay. Yeah, four of the seven MAG-7 names are down in this period of time. And they certainly, technology, I think, is right. the fifth best performing sector. It hasn't contributed. Right. David, what are people doing? I mean, finally, we're seeing a crack in short-term space. I got a two-year yield off the Dudley essay, 3.55%. Are people finally making the great cash move, or are they scared stiff? Well, I don't think that we're seeing a lot of people uh, act big either way. They're not running out, they're not running in, but we do see a rotation. And the question is how much of that is retail driven, how much is institutional. Uh, from a performance standpoint, the rotation's robust. From a flow standpoint, it usually plays catch up because investors are always looking in the rearview mirror. Uh, presidential election coming up in a matter of weeks, I'm told. Uh, what does that mean for you, for your clients? How do you kind of put that into the calculus of this whole thing? Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. And uh, it, you're right, we are in the final 50 days. I'm going to write my kind of every four-year white paper on it uh, near the end of the month. Um, look, the Senate is a bigger issue okay. because I think regardless of what happens, uh, people can say whatever they want about the presidential election. It is a 50-50 race. The polls, the electoral college, the, the just basis of where we are as a country politically, it's a coin flip on the presidential side. Uh, I think it's advantage Republicans on the Senate, but it's not a shoe in They're very likely going to lose almost every seat that they could have won, but they're probably going to win Montana, and they certainly will win West Virginia. That's going to be a 51-49 Senate. It. Mm. So the big market things that could come, when they're, when people are going to talk about well, something absurd like taxing unrealized capital gains, it's never going to happen. Jessica Taylor, you know, we live, David, you're, you're living in L.A., right? I live here in New York, but also based in Newport Beach, California. Yeah, okay, yeah, same thing. I would, I would translate it. He lives in Newport Beach, <laughs> California. He shows up here once in a while. Uh, Jessica Taylor in a Cook Political Report, quote, as, Mont as Montana Senate moves to lean Republican, GOP increasingly favored to win Senate majority. I get the whole political thing, and we're going to inject Kirkpatrick's, uh, Fitzpatrick's going to be on with this, and Gura shows up when he can. <laughs> it's going to be gridlock, right? Yeah. It's just plain and simple. We're way underplaying this. And gridlock has been the best thing for markets since Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan in the mid-1980s. Oh. It lasted through Clinton Gingrich, lasted through Boehner Obama. Uh, and very candidly, it's really what we've had through the more toxic years uh, with Trump and then Biden. So even if the Democrats win the Senate, when you say, see, unrealized capital gains will be taxed? They will not be taxed. Do you just say gridlock? Yes. That's right. And so you mean even if the Democrats win the White House? Or if they win the Senate. Well, they have the Senate now, but um, if they, no, I mean, even, by the way, yes, if the Democrats held the Senate 50-50, there's one, two, or three Democrat senators that are not going to go along with un yeah. taxing unrealized gains I think as this well. is way underplayed, Paul, this idea yep. that, you know, I get the focus, I don't want to diminish whatever your politics are, uh, folks, but you got to look at the whole continuum, like yeah. a Greg Giroux kind of guy, Paul. Yep, you absolutely. Know. So. So, David, are, a lot of folks say, given some of this uncertainty that we've been talking about, go to quality. What does quality mean to you? 
Well, we say go to quality regardless of the macro environment, but that's a, our, our kind of permanent belief about investing. Um, and quality to me means cash flow. I okay. mean, that's the only reason to ever be investing is a return to cash. <laughs> and we think that these dividend growing companies are the most reliable well, ways to name. do it. Come on, we're, nobody's listening. Give me a name. Well, you, I mean, give me a sector, I'll give you a name. I Industrial. Mean, you know, and Cummins has been a really good pick for us this year. CMI is the ticker, and there's a, 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 a lot of uh, uh, angles to that. But I think the whole industrial theme, you know, the cyclicals have not done well, Tom, the last couple months. The cyclicals, in my opinion, are going to benefit. At some point, they got to rebuild Ukraine. At some point, there's going to be more infrastructure in the U.S. Uh, at some point, there is a lot of onshoring yeah. coming going on. This is like a Graham Dodd and Cottle thing. It's not like Columbus, Microsoft Indiana. madness. EBITDA's eight cents, maybe 15 cents on the dollar. Net income's maybe a dime on the dollar. 75,000 people, Columbus, Ohio. How quaint. I know. It's Good morning. Count Uberhart. This is a Count Uberhart. Company. It is. This, this is. I'll, I'll go there. This is. And they make stuff. They made 12.2% over the last decade per year. Yeah. Solid. And so you own that with Microsoft, and that balances things out. Uh, but I, uh, we don't own Microsoft because we have to have conviction in it. We don't want to pay that kind of multiple. And we also think there's a really uh, uh, vicious cycle at play with Microsoft and NVIDIA. The argument from NVIDIA is apparently Microsoft is buying so much from them. And the argument from Microsoft is apparently they're ordering so much. For, for NVIDIA. I don't see how you can have it both ways. At some point, those margins are coming down. At some point, that super cycle is going to end and you're overpaying. Uh, so look, we've obviously not been getting those returns in the uh, big you know, tech names, but we believe that it's worked quite well for us the last three years. I mean, there's some, that's a solid, I'm, I'm thinking about this Cummins here. I mean, okay. Hey. David, thank you. This was great. David Bonson, thank you so much.